Oh, what it's like to be an astrophotographer in Ohio during the winter. What's up guys, it's Chad. Welcome back to the Easy Astro Images channel. All 305 of you now, thank you for joining me on this astrophotography journey. If you like what we're doing here, please don't forget to like and subscribe. So the Celestron AVX mount, it is now at around $1,200. It's hard to believe that just a couple months ago, you could have got this exact same mount for $800. Luckily, I was able to still find one at that price. I've wanted to set up a second rig. I needed to tear down the EQ6R and completely rebuild it because after a year, this thing was starting to perform horribly. There'll be more information about that in an upcoming video. These things are pretty dried out now, but the bearings that came out of this were leaking like crazy. So, that's what you can expect for after a year. That's kind of why I want to make this video because that mount now is like $2,100, maybe $2,200, I'm not 100% sure. But when I bought mine over a year ago, it was around $1,600. So that's quite a price difference. Thinking about down the road in a year that you're probably gonna to have to rebuild it. Luckily, there's a lot of great tutorials out there to get it done. And so far my results have been so-so. I've only had it out one night and we've got some tuning and all that kind of stuff to do. But you're here to talk about the AVX. So let's talk about it. I've owned this before, sold it to actually get that EQ6R Pro, picked up the second one. It still has the exact same problems, of course, that the first one did and a few more. The clutches and everything are still extremely stiff. So there's a lot of grease, all kinds of stuff like that in there, obviously. No belt drives, it's all gear driven, so it does open us up to some more issues. All in all, a good mount, got it connected up to Nina, no problem, using CPWI. Was able to get it running with the ASI Air Pro, but I actually had to reach out to them and a really awesome guy, TJ, hooked me up with a special operating system that kind of fixed some bugs that are going around because of the AVX. So when we're using the AVX mount to connect up to Nina or the ASI Air Pro, whatever, there's no direct USB in the actual mount. So you gotta plug in to the bottom of the hand controller here. And what Celestron has had to do recently is they've actually had to change the chipset inside here. I can't remember if they went to a prolific or left prolific, regardless, it's gonna need different kind of drivers and firmware on the firmware to actually use the mount. So that's why they actually had that software out there that I was able to try. After I downloaded that and reflashed the ASI Air Pro, we were able to connect to it no problem and run all night. Now the rig that we actually ran on the AVX is the C6 Hyperstar rig here that you see. A little bit lighter, all that kind of stuff. Don't really wanna push the weight on the AVX very hard. But all in all, I was pretty happy with the results that I was getting. They were very consistent. We'll go to the computer and take a look at those right now so you can see what the images and the guiding results look like for the night. Since we're shooting Hyperstar, what I decided to do was go ahead and fire up a two panel mosaic of the jellyfish. I think I got about an hour and a half worth of data in each panel. So things didn't turn out bad here. There's no processing or anything just some dynamic background extraction and a little bit of color balancing. Been working on this here a little bit. We'll show you that here in a second. So this is our actual guiding calibration before we started our imaging session. And you can see that most of these fall on both of these axis lines, which is a pretty good thing. And I let it run, did a little bit of guiding assistant to kind of try to two things out a little bit. And for our very first really long run of guiding, at an hour and 45 minutes. You can see down here that our total RMS was 1.45. The RA and the deck are pretty close together. You can see that there's definitely some misbehaving going on and the ability to settle after dithers and these big declination, uh, I would assume they are the declination uh, pulses for backlash. Again, no tuning or anything like that. But all in all, that is uh, not too bad. That's you know pretty much what you would expect out of a mount like this. Now the second long run here of another hour and 45 minutes. Again, pretty much the same story, 1.55. I think I actually could have done a little bit better this night too. I was 
really having some problems focusing my guide scope camera. It was um, insanely cold outside. And uh, actually I actually think I got a little frostbite on my finger because I was up to about four in the morning playing around with these dual rigs. Couldn't just help myself. I needed to jump in and start working on that EQ6R. Did another calibration and slewed around and started some 36 minute shots. Uh, I think they were like 120 or 180 second uh, shots a piece. We were doing a four panel mosaic of the Rosette Nebula and around and again, pretty much the same story. Things started rising a little bit, 1.82, 2.22, things are starting to fall apart here. And here we are back to 1.52 for one of the panels before things kind of just fell apart here at the end. Not 100% sure what that was all about. And just for some comparison's sake here, you can see how my newly hyper-tuned EQ6R performed. I got that declination down really good to 0.66, but boy, something sure was going on in the RA axis. Definitely got to work on that some. It, it was having some problems. But again, this was about uh, three in the morning and I just kind of let it run. It was previously running it on the ASI Air and it was running just fine that night. So could have been a calibration issue, who knows? So these images don't look bad. You know, we're looking at 1.5, 1.6 RMS total. And you know, we could definitely zoom in real close and look at the stars. Keep in mind, these are hyperstar stars. So you're gonna see some flaring and stuff like that. But generally everything is moving in the same direction in all of these stars. So you can see that we've kind of got, you know, the same uh, story going on, but uh, they're a little elongated, no problem. Nothing that a little star reduction can't take care of. You know, when we put an image together like this and do some star reduction, it just pretty much takes all that stuff away. And you can see that our stars now, even though they might look elongated when you zoom in totally, you know, they just don't look bad. This is a great looking Astro image. Again, we're never going for A-pods here. If we get one, then it will just be a miracle. But you know, all in all, I'm pretty happy. I got pretty much what I paid for. Now there are some annoying things that the Celesteron stuff does versus the EQ6R Pro. I like being able to plug directly into it and using the Green Swamp server to like slew home, do all my pec training and everything like that. I don't like having to have another program open. You have to use CPWI to control the Celestron and there's a process to starting everything up and plugging and unplugging things into. You just can't leave it on and just let things go. You can eventually get to that point once you get your night started. But again, you gotta kind of start the mount up, do a quick align, then plug everything in and turn on your ASI Air Pro or turn on Nina, open CPWI, and then you're set and ready to go. But those are just kind of some minor inconveniences for a mount that performs decently at half the price. Now it's definitely nowhere near as well made as the EQ6R Pro at half the price. A lot of plastic. I definitely wouldn't load it up like I would chance loading my EQ6R a lot closer to its recommended weight. That AVX, you definitely want to stick. It has a weight limit of 30 pounds. You definitely want to stick closer to that. You definitely want to stick closer to that half number of 15 pounds. But I think that anybody that says you need to spend a lot more money on a mount, I would agree. But if you are on a budget and you're looking for something just to get yourself going, it's hard to find stock right now of anything. If I could have, I probably would have picked up a EQ5, but they're just non-existent. Who knows when they are coming back. And as I said earlier in the video, I was able to get one of these at the discounted rate or the old rate of two to three months ago, not the newer higher rate. But still, even at that price, everything else has jumped up 25, 30, 35%. It's pretty much where we're at right now. And I think that you, uh, I don't think you can go wrong getting it. You see the kind of results that you can get. This is just out of the box, a little bit of guide assist just to kind of just make uh, some adjustments to the numbers. But I haven't done anything to the mount at all. Probably could have improved focusing a little bit on the guide camera itself. I think that would have cleaned things up a little bit. So we'll see how things go in the future. But until now, I've got a second rig going. It's light, it's portable, and it's pretty much easy going. You see what I did with it in one night, and I'm pretty happy with that. So if you got any questions about anything, please let me know, guys. Please continue to subscribe. Peace.